morning and welcome to Chamel Chapel AME Church School. We're going to open up with a word of prayer. Most gracious and merciful God, we humbly come this day to give you thanks and praise for continuing to love us, regardless of our disobedience towards you. For your word state in Revelation 3, 9, 19, those whom I love I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Believers in humble circumstances are to take pride in their high positions, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like wild flowers for the sun rises with the scorching heat and where is the plant? Withers the plant. It blossoms fall and this beauty is destroyed. In the same way the rich will fade away even while they are about that go about their business according to the word of, of God from the book of James chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. We continue to pray for the country, for our individual leaders. We pray for the strength and guidance of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. John R. Black, Sister Donna, and family. We lift up Reverend Willie Ann Hamilton, touch and heal of the Father God. We pray for all the ministers of the gospel, the sick and shut in, the bereaved families, the Bryant family at this time, comfort them. For we know words of comfort can mean a whole lot. And all you had to do was come and witness and hear the words of comfort. Dr. Black, you eulogized Terrence Bryan yesterday at McCormick Baptist Center in Risen. The care, we pray for the caregivers, the COVID-19 victims, the dementia victims, each man, woman, girl, and boy. Stir us all up in a good way. And especially do not forget the backsliders. Encourage us all. Then, Father God, we both, as sinners and saints alike, can join in that old familiar hymn of the church, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me, oh, remember me. These words we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is the day, this is thy servant's prayer. Amen, amen, amen. We are still in the book of Romans with Apostle Paul, unit two. Fair faith triumphs, law fails. Unit one, Brother James taught us that love completes, law falls short, for God's law is love. Love is an action word. This lesson addresses the question and digs deep into the purpose and applicability of the Old Testament law to Christians' tension between Christians of Jews and Gentiles. Background is the context of the book of Romans chapter seven. Paul expands on this answer to the question in verse seven. Is the law of sin? The law of Moses is neither sin nor sinful. If it is not this cause sin, but the definition. If it is taught is the law is holy because it defies. It is the definition of moral purity. It is righteous because it promotes justice. It is good because it was given by the Lord for people's benefit. The devotional reading this morning will come from the book of Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, chapter seven. False religion, worthless. This correlates with the lesson today. This is the, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah, 
who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty God of Israel says. Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in the deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. It must, you must really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly. If you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and if you do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place in the land I give you ancestors forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, submit, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense and bail, and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house, which has my name and say, we are safe, safe to do all detestable things. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. 14, go now to the place in the shadow where I first made a dwelling for my name and see what I did to you it too because of the wicked wickedness of my people in Israel. While you are doing all these things, you are, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not listen, answer. Therefore, what I did to you, shadow, I will now do to the house that bears my name, the temple you trust in, the place I gave to you and your ancestors. Fifteen. I will thrust you from my presence, just as I did all your fellow Israelites and the people of Ephraim. God's word for God's people. Today's lesson, the law reveals sin, moving from the old to the new. Scripture lesson, Romans 7, 1 through 12, the NIV. NRSV, do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only during that person's lifetime. This is a, thus a married woman is bound by the law. Her husband has been long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is discharged from the law concerning the husband. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with the brother another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. In the same way, my friends, you have died in the law through the body of Christ, so that you may become one long to another, to him who has been named, raised from the dead, in order that he may be better than better fruit for God. While we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are discharged from the law dead to that which held us captive. So we are slaves, not under the law, or in the written code, but in the new life of the spirit. What then should we say? The law, that the law is sin, by no means. Yet it is, if it had not been for the law, it would have not been known sin. It would not have known that what it is to be covered the law had said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity in the commandment, produced in all me and all kinds of covetousness. 
again from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the very commandment that promised the life proved to be death to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity in this commandment, deceived me, through it killed me. Twelve, so the law is holy, the commandment is holy, and just and good. Now let's go into the introduction. Looking in a mirror can make can cause you to compliment or criticize what is seen. The Torah biblical law is a spiritual mirror that gives a reflection. Based upon how we interpret what we see, we can believe that you are perfectly aligned fine and there is no need for further spiritual growth or you can discover ways to move closer to God. As you move the commandments into your heart, you are changed from the inside out. The law of Torah gives a reality check. It exposes you are who you are, a person unable to keep God's commands unless the Holy Spirit intervenes and makes you new. It is important to remember that God's commandments give the in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, Proverbs and Ezekiel. How? By leading one to a change from another, from master, and in another, love. Now let's look at the Bible story. Romans 7, 1 through 3. Paul poses a thought provoking question. He questions those who know the law about a particular aspect of that same law, marriage status. In an analogy, Paul listens to the law to a married woman, a wife, based upon the commands given by Moses. Paul asks what frees a woman from commandment to a commitment to her husband. Freedom from marriage vows only came following her husband's death. In the same way, freedom from deal in accordance with obligation to the law could only occur after her death. If a woman had intimate relations with another man while her husband was alive, she was guilty uh, of adultery. However, once her husband died, she was free to marry another. The scenario would be familiar to the Jews. Throughout the Old Testament, marriage was used as an allegory of God's relationship with Israel. Whenever Israel turned to the worship God's prophets accused Israel of committing adultery because the nation's husband, God, was alive. Fidelity to God could have happened. Romans 7, 4 through 6, the Bible story. Israel's marriage to God presented a quadrant. How could Israel be free from following the law? They are still alive and God was still alive. When they failed to understand was the spiritual release resulting from Jesus' death. Jesus came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Breaking the law required death. Failure to follow God's word spoken by the prophets also led to death. When God desired was not physical death, but human's heart by love for God's neighbor and self, Jesus displayed his love throughout the, his ministry. He fulfilled the law and prophets by giving love that pointed people to God. And when loving acts did not work, Jesus gave his life. 
This example of death showed how people could overcome being ruled by the law by making sharing in Jesus' death, giving self a rule, burial, putting old ways of living in the grave, resurrection, living in the Holy Spirit, plows. Jesus was freed from the law. Uniting in Christ's death meant Jews changed from being fled to the law to being led by the Spirit. Romans 7, 7 through 12. If there were no laws, Paul says, the Jews would not know that they had sinned. Instead of focusing on a sin that can be seen, such as a murder or stealing, Paul focuses on an eternal sin, covetousness. This emphasis is an invisible sin because the Jews reminds the Jews that sin represents a spiritual disease. What was on the inside manifested in outer actions. For Paul, the law consistently reminded Jews and Gentiles that they were in a danger of death. However, the law contains life as it pointed the way to holiness and righteousness. To escape death required deliverance, making sin influence and deceit inactive, in other words. It was not sin or the law that led to death. It was a person's actions that produced death. Now let us look at Sankofa. Slavery produced schisms in the United States. Converting enslaved African people to Christianity presented a threat to the slavery institution. With the emphasis on freedom and deliverance, many enslaved people found hope, fearing a loss of free force labor. Christians in southern states decided to uphold slavery through claims of black infidelity. Slaveholders enforced this belief by demanding that enslaved people totally obey their master. Many evangelist ministers began to preach the doctrine to obedience. Through black, though black ministers preached the obedience message in front of white slave owners, the message absent, the owners was the different. Messages given by black ministers when whites were not present were themes on redemption and deliverance. These messages were reflected in spiritual, which encouraged resistance and escape. As Paul says, the Holy Spirit living inside a person supersedes any eternal laws and result in loving neighbor as self. The case study. Protests have occurred in many countries and around the world. Uprising often uh, against government rules and authority figures. Seemingly, the number of protests will increase. Democrats, democracies, dictatorship, monarchy, aristocrats have had people march in the streets demanding changes to laws and to institutions, social and social justice economic opportunities, women's rights, religious freedom, and immigration reform. Changing laws and establishing a, a loving community is fraught with challenges. Today's lesson demonstrates how difficult it is to have people adopt new ways. God continually calls nations and its citizens to become holy, spiritually led, following Jesus' example of love. Now let us look at life application. Law creates stable societies. While some laws vary from country to country, others are universal 
murder, theft, perjury. Paramount to any human made laws, the God given laws, following these laws requires an understanding of Jesus' crucifixion work. Dying to sinful behavior cannot be achieved by human effort. Sinful behavior can only be overcome by replacing human efforts and letting the Holy Spirit become one's master. It's three questions. How can the law convict you to change your life? How would you explain the biblical law's purpose? And three, how can you require, how can you navigate the law's requirements and freedom Jesus gave? Summary, Paul had a difficult task. He intended, he needed to convince people well versed in the Jewish laws that we would no longer bring bond by requirements. And Paul needed to help them understand that though they were free from the law, the law was still relevant. This is a difficult teaching for Christians. You may desire to be a, you may desire to obey God, but the law obeys you. Do not always achieve this goal. Your new master, the Holy Spirit, will lead and guide you. The main part of the lesson is going from the old to the new, from the law to the spirit. I used to work for a Jew here in Bluffton from 65 to 69. The store was on Calhoun Street, right down the way across from Cornerstone Church. The name of the store was Planters Burton Kill. The owners were Hilda and Morris Rubinowitz. Morris was the boss, but Hilda was the uh, was the dictatorship, was the disciplinarian. She had four kids, and her family was my family, and my family was her family. And we kept, we worked together, and we got paid on Sunday. After working on a half a day on Sunday, but the payday was on Sunday. And they always paid us cash money. We never got a check. That's the way the Jew worked his business. Now let's go to the closing prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for giving new insights about the law and the purpose it has for Christians. Let me lead me to be to the new master, the Holy Spirit so that your behavior becomes a heart governed by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.